Welcome back to theCUBE. My name is Jeff Frick, I'm with SiliconANGLE. We're here at the Amazon AWS Summit 2013 in San Francisco. I think there's a number of stops on this tour, but we're in San Francisco, we're at Moscone Center. We're theCUBE, we go out to the events, we extract the signal from the noise, we grab the people that you want to talk to, we ask them the questions that you want to ask them, and we invite you to participate. The hashtag for the show is uh, AWS Summit with two S's, AWS Summit, send us a tweet, we'll get your question in if we can. And I'm happy to welcome to theCUBE, Nihar Bihani from the yeah. cloud, CloudFront group. CloudFront. It's already yep. been a good day, we've been going back to back to back here. Yep. CloudFront, yep. so tell us, what is CloudFront? Sure, so uh, CloudFront is a, a content delivery service. Uh, it's one of the Amazon Web Services, uh, and uh, CloudFront offers uh, customers uh, an easy way to deliver their content globally. Okay. Using our network of edge locations worldwide. Okay. Uh, and uh, CloudFront also integrates well with other AWS services to really help accelerate the delivery of content from uh, the origin all the way to the end users. Okay. Uh, CloudFront has uh, a variety of different features that I can talk more about. Okay. Uh, and uh, lots of different customers that are using CloudFront. Right. So, so it begs the question, which I always have to remind, I tell my kids who are like 15, you know, the, uh, the search engine wars were over before Google even started, right? There's been CDN services for a very long time. So why CloudFront? What was the opportunity? Why did Amazon des decide to come out with this product? Sure, uh, so CloudFront uh, really came about because of uh, a usage pattern that we noticed. So when Amazon S3 launched, we noticed that a lot of customers were uh, using Amazon S3 as a CDN. Uh, you know, what that meant was uh, a small amount of storage on S3, but lots of data transfer okay. out of S3 to end users. And we, what we realized and thought about uh, is that there must be uh, a latent need in the market for the characteristics that S3 offers, uh, but in the content delivery space. Uh, so these characteristics are uh, self-service, pay as you go, pay for what you use, okay. uh, you know, content delivery, uh, at the same low prices, low cost that S3 charges for storage for instance. So that's how uh, really CloudFront came about and uh, we started to develop the CloudFront uh, offering and launched uh, and launched uh, in November of 2008 a very minimal service. Uh, that's really uh, how AWS uh, approaches launching new services and new features right. uh, by starting out uh, really with the minimum viable offering and then continuously adding features and functionality over time. So when we launched back in 2008, we had 14 edge locations that has now grown to 39. Uh, and uh, we only had HTTP delivery at the time for static content uh, and accelerating static content. And now we have uh, live and on-demand streaming, HTTPS delivery, private content, we have um, dynamic content delivery and a, you know, and a host of other features that we've added since. So that's interesting. So one of the themes of Andy's uh, keynote earlier today, there was a couple things I want to kind of touch on. One was kind of pace of innovation right. at Amazon. And, and clearly I, I think, I don't, I don't work at Amazon, but you know, being a single application web store back in the day, you, know, you, you have a culture of just adding to it, adding to it, adding features, adding features. And it's interesting how you've taken that now really with more of an infrastructure product. So my, my question is, and, and the other thing you talk about is having these customers come in, tell you what they need, and really helping to drive the prioritization of the roadmap. So did, did, did just like a huge bubble of customers start using S3 in this manner, or was there one or two that raised their hand and said, oh my God, this is the, I got to have it, or was it, did they hit some kind of funky pricing anomaly that, that demonstrated that there was this need? How, how did that actually happen the, from, raw data with thousands of customers into, oh my goodness, this is a really great uh, opportunity for us. Right, yeah, so what we, what we really noticed was the usage pattern uh, from a number of customers. And uh, you know, we noticed that they're using S3 as a CDN. Their primary use case was delivering content. Uh, delivering content to uh, user, end users around the world. And uh, that's where we thought that you know, the characteristics of S3 uh, could really apply well to uh, you know, a CDN service that we could offer. Uh, so that's, you know, that's really how uh, the, the content, you know, the CloudFront you know, as a product came about. And then from, there, from that point on, it's really exactly what you said, which is listen to our customers, understand what they need, and then develop a roadmap, prioritize it, and you know, uh, launch those features as quickly as possible uh, with the same high standards of uh, you know, operational excellence and security that our customers expect. Uh, so we have continuously been innovating over the last four and a half years and adding a variety of features 
by listening to customers and understanding what features are most important to them right. uh, and prioritizing those features in right. that way. So can you give us a couple of examples of, of uh, folks prior to this that maybe couldn't afford a CDN, the, the economics didn't work out, there really wasn't the opportunity, they didn't see it, that they're, that they're using it now uh, in some neat and innovative ways that people would like to hear. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so, uh, CDN, you know, CDNs have been around for a long time, uh, but what CloudFront really added when CloudFront launched is that self-service, low-cost, pay-as-you-go offering uh, in the content delivery space. Um, so prior to CloudFront, customers had to use traditional CDNs where they had to pay, uh, you know, a, a premium for different types of for delivering different types of content. Uh, they had to uh, get into and negotiate long-term contracts with CDN vendors. Uh, and uh, you know that really uh, resulted in a lot of customers not being able to take advantage of a lot of the innovative technology that uh, CDNs provide uh, and the benefits that CDNs offer to the customers as well as their end users. Okay. Uh, with CloudFront, um, you know, I'll give you a specific example. So over the last year, we have released several features that enable delivery of dynamic content. Uh, so, uh, and CloudFront has. Like uh, what? Dynamic content. So, dynamic like, content. Give me some good examples. Yeah, so, yeah. weather data. Okay. You weather, know, weather data, data is dynamic mm -hmm. because it's changing very quickly. Right. And it's also personalized and customized because the weather here in downtown San Francisco quite different it's from. Very different up in than Seattle just across the bay. Or just, <laughs> just across the bay, exactly. Uh, so, uh, Earth Networks is one of our customers. They have the weather bug application. Okay. And they use CloudFront to deliver their entire desktop mobile uh, applications uh, and both the dynamic and the static content. Uh, and uh, be able to deliver that weather data quickly to the end users who are looking for that information. Um, you know, CloudFront has, uh, what they really liked about CloudFront is the ease of use. CloudFront was super easy uh, for them to configure. Uh, they didn't have to write any custom code, which they had to do with their previous CDN. Okay. Uh, and they also found significant cost savings when using CloudFront uh, okay. for delivering their entire application. There is actually a great uh, video uh, from Andy Rosenbaum, who's the director at Earth Networks. It's available up on the CloudFront website, where he really talks about why they selected CloudFront, how they configured CloudFront, and the benefits they're seeing. Okay, are most of the, are most of the clients using CloudFront as an extension of their existing AWS services that they're purchasing, or is it uh, often a lead, you know, kind of a lead offering that people are looking for this capability, and that's your first touch? point with that customer? It's really both. Uh, we see uh, both types of use cases, but CloudFront does work very well with other AWS services. Okay. Uh, so CloudFront, uh, when we started CloudFront, uh, it only worked with Amazon S3, but then later we added support for custom origin servers, so you can use ELB for running EC2 instances, uh, or you can even use uh, a web server that's in your own infrastructure outside of AWS as the origin server for Amazon CloudFront. Uh, one thing I'd add there in terms of um, working well together is earlier this year we announced uh, a price reduction if you're using CloudFront with uh, either Amazon S3 or Amazon EC2 as the origin server. The data transfer between the origin and the CloudFront are actually at uh, um, you know a preferential rate which is up to 83% discounted. Uh, so that's that's a better together uh, you know feature where using AWS origins with CloudFront can really help you save on costs. So and maybe you don't know the answer, but are you guys starting AWS more generically to, to bundle combinations of services in more of a package as opposed to to an a la carte? So you you know a, a typical I don't know weather publisher. I don't I don't know what the logical bundles would be. You guys probably do. This is kind of the the combination of assets that that you want to get, and you know we we call it an X and right and. There's, there's advantages to purchasing it that way. I think uh, it goes back to uh, you know, what the customers want and what the customers are asking us for. Uh, our customers, we're very fortunate to have hundreds of thousands of customers uh, across the world and they are very vocal and we love that fact because they tell us exactly what they want. Uh, so when they tell us that they want to bundle different services together, uh, they want to, you know, uh, they want easier management by you know, using things like CloudFormation or Elastic Beanstalk, which are some of our services that help you manage your infrastructure. Uh, we really take, you know, we listen uh, to them, we take that uh, feedback, you know, go back to work, brainstorm, and come up with innovative ways of solving their problems. So, you know, yeah, if, if, you know, if there are different types of bundles that customers are looking for, uh, absolutely, there's, you know, uh, something we would totally consider. So what's the craziest, the craziest uh, customer example that you've seen recently using this service? 
uh, just or innovative, you know, something. Who, who would have known? Yeah, there's a, there's a couple of uh, you know innovative ways in which uh, customers are using CloudFront. So whole site delivery, which is delivering your entire website, both static and dynamic content, is is one way that uh, is really innovative. And what CloudFront has done is democratized using uh, a CDN for delivering your entire website and not just your static content. So uh, that has enabled customers like Earth Networks, the, uh, the reference I gave earlier, uh, to deliver all of their web applications uh, you know their entire application via CloudFront and save on costs uh, without sacrificing any performance. They see they see the same great performance uh, as they did before. The other uh, innovative uh, you know example I'd offer is uh, live streaming. So CloudFront added live streaming support uh, over the past uh, year and a half, and uh, we've seen customers use uh, live streaming to deliver live content, uh, all different types of live content, to end users around the world. And what's really innovative about this use case is we do we give customers the capability to control their origin server that's taking the live feed okay uh, and you know cuz customers have the origin server is actually running on ec2 instances and customers have root access to their origin servers so they can configure advanced features or functionality uh, and however they want to deliver their live stream and then have cloudfront actually cache the the live video and deliver it to end users and in the, in the uh, the democratization of you said of, of the cdns um, you know, are the economics changing so much that you're really getting that, you know, kind of down into, in, you know, releasing capabilities to folks who priorly, you know, couldn't, couldn't take advantage of something like live streaming. Clearly, there's some Absolutely. economic we have, impacts we, there. We have done that uh, numerous times over the past four and a half years since we have added, uh, since we've launched CloudFront. So, like I said, you know, we launched a minimal product back in 2008 with just HTTP delivery. Then, um, shortly after that, we added HTTPS delivery or secure delivery, okay. and uh, the price for that, for data transfer, was the same as HTTP delivery, no additional fees. Okay. Then we added support for private content uh, to secure, to you know, giving customers additional features to secure uh, who, ac who can access their content. Okay. And there was no additional charge to use that feature either. Uh, then we added live and on-demand streaming. And for both of those features, again, the same price as HTTP delivery. Uh, and mo mo the most recent example is the whole site delivery where now you can deliver dynamic content for the same price as static content delivery. So we're really uh, trying to democratize uh, what were premium features previously right. and uh, you know, price them to the extent we can at the same price as static content delivery and have more and more customers take advantage of those features. Okay, and not that you can share anything out of school but you know, kind of looking down the road you know, are there any, is, you know, it sounds like you guys are just cut this constant kind of pace of innovation, incremental, incremental, incremental. Are there any kind of large challenges or large uh, mountains that you're looking to take over the next year if we come back and in a year from now, you know, what, is there anything really big that you guys are really trying to address? Uh, I'd say, you know, there are three uh, specific areas where we focus on in terms of uh, innovating and adding new features and functionality. Okay. Uh, you know, the first one is just, uh, you know, more features. And uh, we ask customers every year, and, and more often, like you know, when I'm in one-on-one -on -one conversations with customers or smaller groups, what are the features that are most important to them? Uh, and that's how the whole site delivery features came about with the dynamic content delivery. Uh, so we'll continuously add more and more features uh, to our offering. The second area I'd say is price. Uh, as we see economies of scale, we'll continue to lower our prices and pass on those savings to customers. Uh, we've done that across AWS, we've done that with CloudFront, and we'll try to continue to innovate there and uh, you know, offer lower prices to customers. And the third area I'd say is adding more edge locations around the world. Okay. Uh, CloudFront's benefits really come to life because of the points of presence that we have around the globe. We have 39 locations today and we plan to continue to add more locations uh, you know, in areas uh, where we don't have locations today to serve those end users better. Yeah, so really that, really supporting that go global, yeah. go global fast, go global easy. Absolutely. Yeah, very exciting stuff. Yeah. And how long have you been working on this project? Uh, I've been with CloudFront for almost three years now. Almost three years, Yeah. awesome. Well, great. Well, that, thanks for coming in sure, theCUBE. Sure, absolutely. So we've been here with Nihar Bihani from the CloudFront group at AWS doing interesting things with CDN. Maybe, I don't know, maybe you got to come up with a new term. Not, uh, <laughs> not CDN anymore. Yeah. We're, I'm Jeff Frick, we're at Amazon uh, AWS Summit, San Francisco, Moscone Center, it's a beautiful day outside. We invite you to join the conversation at hashtag AWS Summit. We're in theCUBE, we'll be right back after this short break. See you on the other side.